31, Public Law 1975, titled Open Public Meetings Act. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as specified in the act. Proper notice of this public meeting is provided in the notices of March 26, 2012. Said notice was posted at the entrance of the Board of Education offices, mailed to the office on the Star Ledger, the North Jersey Herald News, and the Nutley Journal. Mailed to the Nutley Township Clerk, advertised in the Nutley Sun on April 5, 2012, posted on the district website. This is an official meeting. Please stand for a moment of silence and flex. for the High School Athletic Department and our, particularly our fall and winter sports. We saw some, some firsts from some teams, we saw some repeat performances from some teams, and we saw some outstanding efforts and performances from all of our athletes. I'm very pleased to be here tonight. I'm very proud of the accomplishments of our fall and winter athletes and our coaches. But most importantly, I'm very proud of the way they represented Nutley High School, represented Essex County, and represented the SEC on the, on the state level as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring up our head cheerleading coach who um, will tell you about the cheerleading squad and what they've done this year.
Thank you, Ms. Morton. Ms. Morton failed to say that they were the four-time SEC champions this year. So three times, three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. On a personal note, Ms. Morton has um, stepped down as our coach this year, so we'll start with a new coach next year that we're, we're looking very hard for. However, she's going to be very hard to replace, and I want to give her personal thank you as both the athletic director and as a friend for doing such an outstanding job with our coach. I'd like to bring up Ms. Angie Bania. Our head volleyball coach. I'll try to go. Okay. Um, I say this all the time. I am extremely proud of my girls this year. I honestly thought this was going to be a rebuilding year, but they proved me wrong. They worked hard, and we won our first ever SEC division title. So. Caitlin Beck. I don't think she's here. Marissa <laughs> <laughs> Chesmar. First ever volleyball championship banner in our high school gym. So congratulations. To that. <laughs> and while we're on first, for the first time in a long time, we're able to bring up the girls basketball team because they had yet another yet a, a very fantastic season with a lot of great successes. Our coach Dana Wynn. championship. You know, we just did a lot of great things, a lot of numerous individual awards. You know, the girls just came out this season and um, really want to accomplish a lot. championship batter for the SEC championships and the first time for the girls uh, since probably the, the late 70s. So, great job. <laughs> well, 
I say this every time I talk about the bowling team, and they're up there with the Steelers of the 70s, the Yankees, and uh, you know, maybe the Boston Celtics as well. But it's a dynasty here, I'm not leaving. George Ackerman, our bowling coach. Thank you, Mr. Pyro. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't think we'd be back here this year. Uh, for those of you who know, we graduated the whole team last year, except for Tyler Huey. So we pretty much started from scratch. Tyler led the way, and we won the league again. Third year in a row. Big round of applause, Vinamato. Rich Grabowski. Vivek Johnny. Brandon Kwan. Chris Monda. Marth Kumar Patel. Mike Rodas. Barkov Zanani. And last but not least, our, our leader, Tyler Huey. Uh, this year, our Nutley Wrestling Program had its most successful season since its inception. Um, we sent a record of six individual athletes to the state tournament, which we've never done before. We've had a milestone of victories, tournament victories, and I'm going to let Coach Dippiano tell you about it. It was a fantastic season. It was fun to watch. It was fun to be a part of, but I don't want to steal his thunder, so Coach Dippiano, come on. everybody for coming and the guys coming out tonight. Thank the board and the administration for our support this year. Like Mr. Byro said, this truly was a year for the Nutley Wrestling Program to remember. Six individuals qualified for a state tournament. Uh, we brought 11 wrestlers to the region tournament. It was in the past. We haven't taken a bus back to Saturday morning of the regions. We've done that this year. Um, three tournament victories, our Maroon Raider Classic, our, our Stephanie tournament this year for the first time we were there. Um, Essex County Championship for the first time in school history and for the first time in 32 years we won the District 14 tournament. Um, we did this with a fairly young team. We have a lot of guys coming back. The guys that we had are, are leaving are going to be missed, but uh, a couple guys this year with 100 victories. Bobby Trombetta who's a junior. Quickest wrestler to reach 100 victories, and senior Nick Gata, as well as both of them. <laughs> <laughs> as well, they, they both placed in the state tournament. They both placed in the state tournament, and uh, representation down there has been now, I believe, somewhere over 21 years of. Nutley had represented down at the state tournament. So it was truly a great year. Also, 19 and 4 record, won the SEC for the first time, and 19 wins is the most wins in school history. Pete <laughs> Burbank. Nick 
Gate. <laughs> David Golombeski. <laughs> Brian Dowdy. Andre Hamlin. <laughs> Joe Iorio. Chris Obama, Kenny Pena, Carlos Rosa, Steven Spitaro, Robert Spagnolo, Robert Spagnolo. Thank you. As Mr. DiPiano said, we had two wrestlers to place in the state tournament. That's the first time in school history. If anybody knows anything about the wrestling uh, tournament, it's a very, very difficult tournament to place in. And a little bit of luck, a little bit of experience, but you just have to be in the right place at the right time, dedicated, hardworking, and we were very proud to have two place winners. Bobby Trombetta placed sixth in his weight class, came to the semifinals and falling short. And Nick Davis placed eighth. And uh, last but definitely not least, he's a, he's a pretty humble guy. But Coach DiPiano was named District 14 Coach of the Year for the second time in his career and the Region 4 Coach of the Year for the first time in his career. Thank you. Um, again, it's my pleasure. I say this every time I'm up here. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. It's my pleasure to do this job. I love this job. So, because of our successes, but most importantly because of our kids and the things that they bring to Nutley and they bring to our county and our conference, our league. I'm very proud of them and our coaches. Mr. President, Mr. Superintendent, Mr. Board of Education, I present to you the fall and winter SEC champions. I'd like to congratulate all the athletes. Uh, job well done. A lot of awards. Love honors. Congratulations. We'll now take a uh, brief recess. This will be a bit of opportunity to congratulate the athletes and for those who have to leave, the students that probably have homework and studies and stuff like that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Board member Steve Rogers was elected commissioner uh, in the most recent election, and as a, as a result of that, he uh, attended his resignation effective 11:59 a.m. Uh, Tuesday, May 15th, before his sworn in as commissioner, uh, creating a vacancy on the board. <coughs> By rule, uh, we have 65 days to fill the vacancy, uh, or else the county superintendent has the option of filling it for us. Our plan is to fill it ourselves. The process we will be following will be accepting uh, from interested parties uh, a letter of, of interest, and I ask that that be submitted by June 1st. Those who are interested, a letter and a, res a resume, a brief resume of why they, uh, their qualifications for the board. There is a, uh, an ad going into the Nutley Sun this Thursday which in that says by June 6th, uh, excuse me, June 4th, which is Monday, so if it's by that day, we're saying if we get it in by that Friday, which is the first, that would be appreciated. That'll give us one week. The following uh, week is a, uh, a board meeting on June 11th. Depending upon how many applicants there are, the board will either go through the applications at that, at that point in time on the 11th, 
or if there is a significant number that have an ad hoc committee to sift through them and, and to narrow the field a little bit for the most qualified, and then the board will uh, deliberate on those on the 11th. The intent is to name to vote on a replacement by June uh, 20 at the June 25th meeting. Uh, if there, again, if there are a significant number of applicants, uh, we may have to push that into July and either have a special meeting in July uh, to elect the board member or if we get a waiver for the few days from the county superintendent, uh, do it at our July, regular July meeting. Uh, the the uh, ad in the newspaper uh, states the qualifications. Board of Ed members must be a U.S. citizen, resident of the district for at least one year, be able to read write, be registered voter, and not have an interest in any contract or claim with or against the, uh, the board, and to be able to undergo a criminal history check. So that's the process, the timing uh, that we are uh, looking at for the uh, meeting in the board of Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, Mr. Rodgers was, in fact, successfully good for commissioner. I uh, want to congratulate him, and I'm sure in his new role, he will continue to do right uh, by the town of Dudley, as he did in the board, he will be missed here. Uh, I did want to talk Mr. Barry's here. We recently had a decathlon at high school. Uh, from every, every report possible, was an extremely successful event. Thank you, the administration, certainly to all the student leaders uh, who made that, that event such a success. I do want to take an opportunity to restate uh, our graduation dates. The graduation dates, again, are located on the main website and as we roll on our new website, they'll be available uh, as they are something in flux throughout the year, dependent on how many emergency closing days we use. They'll be available the entire year, throughout the year, uh, modified as we are forced to use emergency closing days so that everyone who needs that information can have it whenever they so need it. Uh, just to reiterate, our kindergarten graduation as it stands now is uh, June 19th. 6th and 8th grade are June 20th with the 8th grade uh, outside on the Oval at 9 a.m. and the 6th grade at the individual elementary schools being at 2.30 and our high school uh, graduation will be Friday evening, June 22nd. In order to prevent any mass hysteria, I did want to point out to everyone that we will be having our biennial crash course in reality set up by Mrs. Casilli and members of the high school staff. Uh, crash course uh, in reality is a simulated drunk driving crash. We will be closing down a piece of Franklin Avenue. Uh, they do this once every other year. And uh, the students will be out on the grass in front of John Walker Middle School. Uh, and they will actually, actually observe the response, the reaction itself, the response, and be able to debrief afterward. It's uh, been used many times in the past. We get incredible student feedback as far as the impact it has on them, the learning for them. And so uh, if you're in the area on May 31st, please don't be alarmed. You happen to witness a huge accident and then all sorts of emergency personnel responding is actually all under control. I want to thank uh, Ms. Bellani, uh, all of our principals and testing coordinators as well as our teaching staff. Uh, we have for the most part completed our state assessments for the year. Uh, we still have uh, a few tests out. Uh, Ms. Davilio, are you here? Thank you once again for running the advanced placement for our students and making that available. I know it's, it's a big task between you and Ms. Bellani and I'm sure you're very happy that this day has come and the tests are away. So we, we await the results from those. Um, Warren has a big success for us, the Team Media Contest, which is a statewide contest um, offered by the Department of Human Services. On our six New Jersey high school and middle school students for winning entries, this is the 17th time they've done that. Two of the six were from Nutley, um, and we want to congratulate them. We're going to be adding our webs uh, to our website. They have actual video uh, as well as articles uh, on the students and uh, their winning entries, and so we'll, make, we'll be making those available. As well, another academic achievement, our Essex County Academically Speaking Competition is on May 10th. And uh, the Nutley A Elementary team competed in the semifinals uh, of the tournament. They won overall second place trophy. Uh, and the John H. Walker Middle School team competed, uh, setting the highest score ever achieved by a team in a single match of 1,070, which vaulted them directly into the finals where they defeated Cedar Grove to win the Essex County title. So congratulations to that team. Mrs. Jamins, uh, Ms. Bellani, and I met with uh, Warren McCreesh and Thomas Stano at the Department of um, Public Affairs here in Nutley to continue that, that our work towards shared services. We are uh, pursuing a number of different grants all through Robert Wood Johnson. 
Um, we laid out a timeline. We've actually made connections with Princeton and a number of other districts to see what else they are doing in these lines to make sure that we're successful pursuing this money. In all, what will most likely happen if we're successful, we'll be able to reinvigorate um, our science curriculum as well as um, what they call CATCH, or a coordinated approach to child health, which will impact our extended day program. But bringing more uh, services and facilities in for the students of nothing, which is it's a nice thing to be doing, uh, especially in tandem with the town. I want to congratulate um, Mr. Ackerman. Did Mr. Ackerman leave? Yes, he did. He did. Mr. Ackerman and his faculty, and, uh, they put together both the, the Arts Festival at the high school and the one here at the middle school this past week. It was a fantastic display of our student work. Um, their passion, their talent was certainly on display. Uh, the kids were there talking about their artwork, which to me is the most exciting part, actually walking around and talking to the students about how the class has impacted them, why they're so passionate about it, what their different art, their pieces of artwork mean to them, how they came about doing it. That to me is always the most interesting. Um, and so congratulations to all the students who were a part of that. Strategic planning, sorry. We have a number of members of our strategic planning committee uh, here tonight. Uh, I do want to thank them publicly. We are coming down uh, to the last last steps in a very long but important process. Um, just recently we finalized what will become our overarching five-year goals and uh, started to draft these objectives. We have one piece left, which are sometimes the hardest to write. They are both our strategies and our delimiters. Strategies being what we promise we will do in pursuit of our uh, strategic goals and delimiters what we promise as a district we will not do. Um, so those always bring on some vigorous debate. But once we uh, nail those down at our next meeting, it's not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, uh, our hope is to have a final presentation for the board uh, the second meeting of June and initiate all of our work toward uh, achieving that strategic plan July 1, if not the day after our meeting. So that's where we are. Um, the announcement for our Department of Public Affairs, uh, we've been cooperating with them. Uh, our nurses uh, deserve a, a a nice round of applause for their work in their food allergy awareness program. <laughs> May 22nd, which is tomorrow, uh, they're having a program at the public library to honor um, our nurses for the work that they've done. Um, and uh, we love anybody who can to attend and, and show your support. Uh, it's actually a big deal of bringing awareness uh, to our students in the schools. It's great that we're we're not just sticking to what many people call the core academic, but we're trying to make sure we're talking about all uh, topics that are important to students and getting every single member of our faculty and staff involved. So thank you to them. Uh, that brings me to my last topic, um, which is a big We, since July, have tried to make the commitment that we communicate everything as successfully as possible. We follow a model of the right information to the right people at the right time in the right way. Um, and with a district this size, it's not always possible to get out in front of everything, but I want to take this opportunity to try and clarify a few things. There's been a lot of talk around town about this uh, topic of variances. So I wanted to get some information out there specifically. First is, what is the, what is the variance? People are talking about having a We have a policy uh, in district where the school district and most districts do have a policy like this. Honors requests of certain uh, uh, of parents to allow students to attend a school for which they're not districted. Case in point, I might live in Lincoln School District, um, but for some specific reason through hardship, I want I need my child to attend Spring Garden School. Um, I can apply uh, to the administration to see if they will grant that variance. And that variance is granted um, on four key pieces, but the two that are most important and, and always changing are the environmental, uh, the instructional environment, and class size considerations. Um, the idea behind that is that. There will be time from time to time a hardship that the district can help um, to assuage in a way by allowing a parent the convenience of attending a more appropriate school. But one of the reasons that the, the policy is there is that districts take great pains to know the town itself, to know its facilities and its resources, and to draw district lines so that schools can constantly continue um, an appropriate instructional environment. And those lines are well researched. It takes a great deal of time to do that. It's not something you do over a night or a weekend or even a summer. Um, it takes a great deal of time and research to make sure you get it right. Um, and this variance policy has impacted those lines in that research. Um, to try to describe what's happened over the past number of years, rather than for hardship, it seems um, the variance policy has kind of taken on a life of its own. And people, for different reasons, again, all almost always valid, 
um, have been availing themselves of the process without any checks or balances toward those two pieces that I mentioned before. And what has happened is our schools have grown in ways they were not designed to grow. And this has impacted the instructional environment. And unfortunately, uh, it's come to a head this year, of course. My first year. <laughs> but um, I wanted to let you know what happened. When I came in in July, in reviewing all of our policies and looking at our buildings and the environments within the school, um, I spoke with the administration committee in July that this was a concern of mine. Because having been through this process in other districts and never seen it used quite this way, I was concerned that our schools would become a place that would become more and more difficult to instruct students uh, appropriately. So we came up with a plan. First was to clarify the process. Start talking about variances, what they are, where it comes from in our policy, how they should be used, when they should be used, why they should be used, and what our plan was moving forward. We changed all the documentation and the timelines to give us the administration that's your principal's central office, as well as communicating with the Board of Education. Ample time to figure out who's where, so we can guarantee that we have an appropriate instructional environment. Um, so we set in stone kind of a timeline. We started to communicate that first and foremost to the people who were already using the variance policy. Next to the people who requested variances coming into the district fresh. And now, with a conversation like this, we want to try and get out to the entire district. Um, we changed the documentation. We haven't changed the policy. The policy is, is well written and, and stands as it always has. But we wanted to make sure that people were clear when they used the policy what they were actually doing. And so we tried to make that clear. There are multiple forms now that share the same, same language so that we can make sure that everyone who's even thinking about uh, asking, requesting for a variance uh, understands exactly what that means. And uh, from time to time, the issue is when those conditions change, and a lot, most of the time those conditions are beyond the control of anyone up here, and really anyone in the community, we have to protect the instructional environment for the good of the students to make sure that we maintain the level of performance that we want here in other schools. Um, after clarifying the process, our second step was that we wanted to hold to the intent of the policy. The board was adamant that we want to continue to use the policy to assist people <coughs> in the community um, who, through hardship, are better served by being allowed to have their students attend a different school. Um, our other piece was that we were very committed to, to allowing what we, what we describe as aging out. No one did anything wrong. Um, students are in schools, uh, parents are supporting those schools. We, we <coughs> want to maintain that community connection. The problem is, if something changes beyond our control, then it becomes a question of what's appropriate for everyone <coughs> involved when it comes to instruction. Um, we were hoping, fingers crossed, that there wouldn't be any what we call bubbles, surges in a certain grade level in a certain building, that we could maintain our existing environment and allow students to finish school where they are. Um, it's another part of the plan, though, moving into my second year, we had planned, we had done this about eight or nine years ago, but it was, not, it was about every five years the district should do a residency suite. Verify every person's address, where they're attending school, siblings and the rest, so we have an accurate record of who's attending our schools, where they're living, how they're getting to and from, and what our numbers look like, big picture. Not just in one building or one grade level, but you know, P12 here across all of our buildings. Once that was done, it was our final plan to then examine the different lines to make sure that they're appropriately drawn. And that, of course, would be some consultation with experts who do this. We couldn't do any of that, though, until we knew exactly where everyone was and that they were supposed to be. That was our plan. And the best laid plans, of course, in my first year again, we had um, a bubble, an unforeseen bubble with kindergarten registration and it impacted one of our buildings specifically. Uh, and unfortunately, information started to get out in ways that we couldn't control and we <coughs> couldn't have the appropriate conversation. Our plan was to make sure we talk to the people who might be impacted first out of respect to them and their situations. Uh, and as things go out, that became impossible. It was a crisis in a way of another creation, something that we couldn't, another's creation, we couldn't control. No one would foresee that we'd have that many students in one particular grade level all attending one specific school. And unfortunately what that does is this. We build sections in a building based on the number of kids that we have and what is considered best practice, proven by research and experience, for the number of kids that should be working with any one teacher in a classroom setting. We like to hold true to that. However, as we've been granting variances, we've been expanding within each of the buildings. And as you know, our facilities have a ton of character. Um, they're well-built structures. Uh, they're great places for learning. But they're the size that they are. And eventually, if you keep expanding, you're going to hit your limit. 
And unfortunately, again, this year we did. And what, that, what I mean by that is we had so many kindergartners coming into one particular school that in order to preserve the instructional environment, we had to expand an extra section. We don't have a room in this particular building to do that the way things are structured currently. Um, we also did not have what we call an FTE. We did not have the money to hire another teacher because in order to make next year's budget, we unfortunately ended up reducing positions, not expanding. So we were short a teacher and we short a place to put that, that class, even if we had the teacher. Um, what this involved then is trying to maintain the instructional environment at a higher grade level, and yet be able to collapse a class to free up both the teacher and that room so that we can maintain equity and best practice K-6 in the specific building. The entire time we've gone through this, we've tried to be creative. And the most difficult part about having a conversation like this is literally from day to day, the numbers change. Um, you would think in, in a town like Nutley, where uh, most people are here and, and set, uh, that the numbers don't change. But actually, just between even Friday and Monday, we're continually having changes in situations and flux. So what has this done, unfortunately? There are some positives and some negatives. The negative, which really is something we have to work on, is that unfortunately it seems to have been, a, it's a very divisive issue. Um, parents are concerned for the education of their children, as they should be, and we're trying to be concerned for the education of all children. And with limited resources, limited space, and as these numbers change, everyone in a way, unfortunately, kind of sees one thing from their perspective, which is 100% accurate, but again, perspectives and when you have limited resources sometimes clash. And so it became a very difficult conversation. Here are the positives, though. Um, we've been able to make clear that I think as a board and as an administration, we're prepared to make very difficult decisions to do what's right for all kids in the district. Um, we've also tried to communicate clear visions for what should be going on in the schools, how they should be structured, how we should be communicating, and most importantly, what great instruction looks like and when you see it in our schools. Um, we want to make sure that Nutley Public School District, that this district is a model district for anyone in the state, let alone the country. And that takes making very difficult decisions, it takes communicating a vision, it takes getting a lot of really talented people to work together toward one vision. And as far as positives, the community effort here. I've had now conversations with individual parents at PTOs, um, with groups of, of teachers and the rest, and I will say what I've been saying for 11 months, which is the one thing that separates not me, I think, above all, of all else is the community. People here are committed to making Nutley great. And that's something we didn't want this conversation to get in the way of. Um, this has also allowed us to focus the conversation on instruction. This has forced us to have conversations with different groups of stakeholders based on what we see for the good of our students moving forward when it comes to instruction. Getting people to understand things like class size, instructional method, size of a, of a facility, room space and resources. These are all very complicated things that are always in flux and it's been great to have good conversations and I'm determined that they will continue. Um, the last thing that is highlighted as a positive is that we have to make sure we continue to collaborate um, and address difficult issues like this that exist in the district together. I'm, com I'm confident that if we stay positive and keep listening to one another, that we'll be able to find solutions that are best for every single student. It sometimes takes time, it takes a lot of work and commitment from everyone, but I think we've had that. Um, I do want to state that we're committed to preserving the instructional environment for every single student. At the same time, we continue to explore, not just in this instance, but in any challenging instance that comes along, every option available to us, whether it's partnering with the town, other districts, or re-examining the way that we do things across our schools and in our classrooms. We will make sure that we leave no stone unturned as we try and move everything forward. Because the last thing we want um, is for someone to be turned off to the process. We want parents involved, we want stakeholders involved, our faculty is involved, our Board of Education is extremely involved, um, and we want the community involved in continuing to support these schools and moving them forward every single day. Um, that said, we've also made it our business to make sure that we're standing up for every single student. I feel that it is my job to speak up for everyone so that they don't necessarily have to come to a microphone. Where it might be uncomfortable for me, I can understand that it would be even more uncomfortable for people in the public sometimes to come to the microphone to speak up. And that's why I try to see a large perspective in my, my email box, believe me, the last few days, but my phone as well, always open. Um, I'm always available, and I do my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I'm not the master of my own schedule, but I, I will get back to you. Um, but we want to keep those lines of communication open. 
That said, moving through this, there are some pieces that have come up that, again, um, I did want to confirm. Coming in new, uh, we're dealing specifically with um, districting and how there are new developments. I've been getting multiple stories for 11 months about um, a specific development at Cambridge Heights. And I wanted to, again, I'm coming in in the 11th hour, but I wanted to get some information out there because there seems to be not some misunderstanding, but the lack of information. I, I feel I would be remiss if we don't communicate the information that we have. Um, Cambridge Heights is almost entirely uh, zoned, districted for Yanacoff School. Um, that said, when you look at the population in Yanacoff School that's, that comes from Cambridge Heights, it, it's less than one-fifth of the total percentage of the school. Um, there are almost as many variance students in Yanacoff School as there are students from Cambridge Heights that are appropriately districted. And so I want to make that clear that no one group, no one area, no one decision has necessarily caused us this, this concern. Okay? But we're going to work through it today. At the end of the day, I believe that we have five fantastic elementary schools. We have, we have a terrific middle school, junior high. Um, and we have a, a fantastic high school that sets our kids up collaboratively, virtually, um, K-12, to be successful beyond public school. Can we be better? Absolutely. And I hear that most of the time from all of you, from the staff. Everyone wants to constantly take another step forward every day. And I'm looking forward to being with you to as we do that. In regards to this, I can tell you that while I have any communication with, again, specific parents, um, those, commit, those conversations, while they could be stressful, um, in my opinion, have been ex extremely pleasant in the sense that it's, it's a high-stress conversation when you're talking about kids, especially individual kids. That said, through it all, I've tried to answer every question possible, um, be as open and available, give as much specific information as possible. And the conversations, as I said again, that we've had, I think they've been very effective in people communicating how they feel and what they think and, and being receptive to listening to where we need to go as a district, how we've gotten to these specific places. Um, and what I can tell you is this board has been committed to um, looking at every possible option. And while we do have to take certain steps in the immediate, I'm confident that moving forward, we're going to find a solution. And I will say one more time, we will never, ever um, jeopardize the instructional environment for any student. At the same time, we have to take into consideration the well-being of every student as we try and do it. So we will make sure that that is our focus and our continued goal as we move forward. Before we move on, I'd just like to make one comment. I think that the time is at hand where we form an ad hoc committee uh, for uh, facilities and demographic planning. Uh, this out. We haven't done it in a while, and we have to update. I think it's, we need to update our facilities plan to go forward and, and tie it, link it also with our strategic plan to make sure that we're in sync. So I'm going to form this uh, committee uh, in the near future. Really, not to handle the short term problem, but to look at it from a longer perspective to make sure that we can minimize these difficulties as we go forward. First, I'd like to thank all the uh, parents that are here tonight. Um, we all have the same interests, which are your children. Uh, but I'd like to make a statement that we, uh, we all support our superintendent and have all the confidence in him and his staff to maintain the best educational environment for our children to learn. Therefore, we will be looking into every option available at all our schools to come up with the best solutions for our children's education with the least amount of impact on our students. Uh, as Mr. Lazarus has said, this isn't, you know, I know people are hearing stories about what's happening, and but we are still working on every issue, not just at Yanacol, but at all our schools. And uh, we will definitely be the most responsible that we can to your children and to the best education that we can for all our kids. As one that we know, we're going to stick behind you. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Secretary's report. As we're getting close to the, to the close out of the school year on the financial side of things, we are beginning to uh, close out all of the purchases for the 2011-12 school year. And I would like to thank all the administrators for all their work and cooperation in meeting the deadlines. Um, it 
really helps to streamline things and to ensure that we are spending our money the way we have it budgeted for the school year and getting all of the uh, needs of the district taken care of at an earlier planning stage. We're also going to be opening up the portal for 2012-2013 within the next week so that we can begin processing all of the purchases to ensure that all of the students and teachers and administrators have all of their needs completed and ready to go for September. Thank you. Thank you. Committee reports. Yes, Mr. President, um, the administration committee met recently. Um, just to let you know, we, we dealt with the uh, RFP for the solar program that we're looking into. We also, as you'll see on some of your resolutions tonight, dealt with particular policy updates. And, and just so all board members are aware, if, if you make some drastic changes in the policy, you will be made aware of any changes. If, if we just update the policy as far as the data is concerned and the material that's in there, it's just going to go through as a policy that, that just has been reviewed. Um, we're trying to get through as many as we can through every one of our meetings. But if you've looked at your policy books, you know there's hundreds of them. So it's going to take us time. But we're trying to put a little priority to um, particular policies and work them through. You'll see some of them on your resolutions tonight and some of them that are up for uh, first reading that we can discuss before the second reading comes up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Filling in for Dr. Reed, the academic committee last met on May 8th. Um, at that time, Ms. Malani would be with the committee members and update on the use of performance matters to analyze assessment results. She also reviewed with the coordinators this week to begin to access data and look at results by content area, grade, or student. The administrators will continue to work to include common assessment data as well as review the data and gather information on our assessments and programs. As well, they're working to update policy to include information on option two as outlined in the high school program of studies previously. As far as technology, there's been a great deal of ongoing behind the scenes work towards updating that technology. The academic committee has requested a timeline for rollout of the current component of real time. Mr. Levine has been training key staff members from each building. With our race to the top three grant application, it has been resubmitted with requested changes and we're waiting to hear back on that. The Local Professional Development Committee created district goals centered on common language and the evaluation process. These were shared with the school-based teams. All of these goals are the Professional Development Plan, which has been submitted to the County Office for review. As far as curriculum writing, Ms. Milani will work with the teachers at each grade level to rewrite the language arts and mathematics curriculum. We've also discussed the potential use of EduSera as a credit recovery opportunity for our high school students. I'm understanding that's uh, something similar to an online summer school program for those students that might be in need of that. And regarding the National Honor Society, there's a proposal now to have a full induction ceremony for seniors only and that would allow ineligible students <coughs> to work with the Honor Society committee members to create an action plan and then possibly become eligible their senior year. That's all I have to come here. Thank you. The Finance Committee met on May 15th. At that meeting, we had a presentation by Bond Council and our financial consultant regarding the bond refinance. Uh, they updated us and said that based on current market conditions, we should hold off. They recommended that we hold off on the refinance. The aggregate amount does not uh, cross the 3% threshold that is necessary to do it, and there are some options, but their recommendation is that we continue to monitor the market. They feel that the conditions will become more favorable in the future and that we hold off at this point in time. Uh, we reviewed the financial projections. It's a five-year projection of costs going out. Looking at the ability to maintain funds for technology, capital reserve, and uh, professional development in particular. Uh, we reviewed the, uh, continued to review the liquid church lease and uh, the negotiations with the church. We are recommending that the, uh, that the, settle, the lease be signed with a, a uh, $1,125 uh, usage per week 
of $695. It's, uh, the contract is with the attorney right now to develop it. Once we have that, we'll review it with the full board. Uh, we review the internet connectivity costs. Then we receive a 40% discount uh, from our provider. We look at grant writer. Uh, historically, what it's cost us and what we have uh, been, how we, which we have benefited from it, with the idea of, in mind of this becoming a shared service with the, uh, with the township. So we're putting numbers together on that front. Uh, we reviewed the bids for vehicle maintenance and recommending to the board that, that we actually, in one of the resolution is that we reject all bids. There was some ambiguity in the RFP and uh, some confusion of some of the vendors. And so this being clarified, and we'll rebid this uh, so that we don't have any issues about bidder, uh, non, non successful bidders uh, coming back at us. Finally, we uh, talked about the uh, shared service using the, uh, uh, for the school physician, and that continues to move on. Hearing of citizens. We now come to the portion of our meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. In this section, we allow questions or comments on only the resolutions addressed at tonight's agenda. Board regulations allow 20 minutes for these communications. This person shall be limited to three minutes. We ask you to try to stay within this requirement. Speakers may speak more than once only after all others wish to speak on the topic have been heard. All statements will be directed to me as chairperson and no one may address the board members individually. Please be reminded that if your statement is too lengthy, personally directed, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember to always state your name and address each and every time you address the board. First person wish to speak, please step forward. Board resolution items only. Seeing no one, I'll close this portion of the meeting. Mr. Kaczynski, will you move? I'm sorry. Mrs. Russo, will you move academic resolutions one through five? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to move academic resolutions one through five as listed by several. Discussion. Roll roll, please. Mrs. Sanchez Morton? Yes. Ms. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Yes. Mr. Spizzato? Yes. Mr. Victor? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski, we move administrative resolutions one through six. Yes, Mr. President, I move administration resolutions one through six. <coughs> it's so prepared. Second. Discussion. Hold the roll, please. Mrs. Stanchek Martin? Yes. Mrs. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Yes. Mr. Spazzato? Yes. Mr. Cookton? Yes. Mr. Spazzato, we move. Finance resolutions one through thirty. Yes, Mr. President. New finance resolutions one through thirty is written. Second. Discussion. Should we note the change on the group? Oh, it is a public process. Any other discussion? If not, all the rules. Mrs. Stanchek Morton? Yes. Ms. Flynn? Yes. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Yes. Mrs. Pizzat? Yes. Mr. Kostin? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski, you move personnel resolution number one. Yes, Mr. President. I move uh, personnel resolution number one, personal agenda report, and still prepared. Second. Discussion. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Stanchek Martin? Yes. Ms. Flynn? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Russo? I abstain on Colonel Aponte Rio as pursuant to law. Mrs. Pizzato? Yes. Mr. Cooktech? Yes. Hearing of citizens. In this section, we allow questions or comments on all school related matters. Our regulations allow 30 minutes for these communications. Again, each person shall be limited to three minutes, and we ask you to try to stay within this requirement. As I stated earlier, all statements will be directed to me as chairperson and no one may address the board members individually. Please be reminded that if your statement is too lengthy, personally directed, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. 
please always remember to state your name and address each and every time you address the board. The first person who should be heard is the board. Um, I'm sure you know who I am. I'm Sharon Baza, 68 Ray Street. I live in Nutley. I have been here on multiple occasions. And every time I come, I'm always dressed from work and appropriate. And tonight, I'm just like I see our kids. Okay? From the high heeled shoes to the short shorts to the guinea tees to the cut off things to all of the, I can't understand why, with all of the information I have brought to you, I have come in with petitions. <coughs> Hundreds of people have signed. I have given you statistics. I have heard over and over again that it's been in review. It hasn't been in review as far as I'm concerned. It's on the back burner. I've had a personal meeting with Mr. Lazarus, and everything he said sounded great. But here we are in May. School's over in a month. And not once did one email go out to maybe ask the parents if they wanted it. Not one of anything was brought forward to my attention or anybody else's. I get emails, I get phone calls from people constantly. What's going on with the uniforms? What's going on with the uniforms? And it sickens me to say, you know what, nothing. The board's done nothing. And I can say that honestly because the board has never ever gotten back to me to say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Instead, the budget comes first, this comes second, this comes third. Has any committee member discussed it? Has there been out there in the public eye? Has one email been sent out to anyone to even request it? Do I, you know, I'm at a point now where I came here just to give you a visual of what the public sees. This is what our kids look like walking down Franklin Avenue. They're in their high heel pumps with their short shorts. Everybody's staring at them, it's the talk. I don't understand what is the problem with getting together something for a uniform. Does anybody have any answer to that? Like, nobody ever answers me when I'm up here. Everybody says they go quietly. Everybody says nothing. Everybody says, oh, no, we're having a committee together. But I have not gotten one concrete answer to say, Mrs. Baza, we're actually thinking about it. Mrs. Baza, we think that we're going to send out an email through Mr. Williams' email, through Navios, through any one of your counselors. Never once. And now we're going to know why. Mr. Lazarus. Mrs. Bobby, with all due respect, we did, we did come and have an hour and a half conversation about it. We did. In late fall. We did. And we talked about how what we see on Franklin Avenue is not necessarily what we see in the high school. I have, we have administrators here. And what we talked about at that time is that you were convinced with the new, new high school principal, the interim principal, as well as the new superintendent, that the policy itself may not have been the issue. So a call for uniforms was not necessarily the issue, but what we wanted to see was how things progressed under the new administration of that policy and whether students were dressed appropriately. And what you had mentioned is that you would come back in the early spring and that we would talk about what you were seeing. This yeah. is what I see, Mr. Lazarus. And this is the first time I'm hearing from you about what you're seeing, because as far as I know, in dealing with the high school and being in the high school, we're not having a dress code issue. And so as far as our kids are addressed in the buildings, now, also to be fair to the board, um, we as the administration committee, we went through, no exaggeration, hundreds of pages of research that I went and, and mm -hmm. pulled on uniforms and the rest as an administration committee. We discussed that. And we, and we talked about that throughout the, through the winter. So when Mr. Kaczynski was making his reports, we did talk about when we talked, we actually reviewed the policy itself. And so my concern was that, if, and my understanding was if you were still having issues, we're going to talk again in the spring. So I'm more than happy to sit down and talk about what you're seeing. Hopefully, we can do it during the day. When I'm dressed in my There it is. I just want you to get the impact of what we're seeing. I know you said, yeah, Frank, but those kids are leaving your high school. They're leaving your junior high. They're dressed like this. They're walking around. We discussed issues with money. We discussed that not parents are home in the morning because both parents work in today's society. I'm a single mom. Okay? I drive my daughter to school. She doesn't have anything in the back of the car that she's going to change into. There is no, you know, in my house, that's what rules. But it's not in every home. I am not judging one parent in this world. But I know what it's like to have to be rushing out the door. And you know what? It's a rough world out there. Uniforms are so much easier. You polled your students. And you know what? Half of the students that were polled wanted uniforms. That's a huge, significant amount. But you know what? Even their cries were not heard. 
No, they didn't again. That's well, but nothing's been done. Nothing's been done. It's not that nothing's been done again. We talked about the issues with you. I'm more than happy to sit and have another conversation today. But I'm having it here. I want people to hear what I'm saying. When we started to talk to students from high school about that survey, a number of students didn't take it seriously. And oh, so, they just put yes because it was a joke? Well, because they were leaving. And so we have to be very careful about the data that we produce. But again, it definitely is a serious issue. But I'll come back to the points that I made earlier, which are that I'm coming from a district that had uniforms. And? And before the kids could leave the property afterward, you would never recognize that. There's nothing that we can do when they're leaving the school or coming to the school. And I respect 1,000% what you're talking about when it comes to your family situation and what you do. It's not about me. Well, that, well that's just it. I, we can't control any of that. It's not about me. <laughs> and unfortunately, I'm very disappointed throughout this whole year that not, this subject has not come up once, has not been addressed to the parents out there, just amongst the board members and the committees that you form. Because you haven't given parents the opportunity to express themselves. Not everybody can make it to a board meeting on a Monday night or a Thursday night, okay? We all have busy lives. We all have children we're raising. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in this audience that have children in this school. I know they do. And I get calls from people from kindergarten that want to start their kids in the uniform up to their last year of high school. And absolutely. So, and as an example, we had I mean, strategic planning, which I talked to you about how we would roll the uniforms and that question of uniforms into it. We sent out a student survey as well as a parent survey. We sent a parent out a survey? I didn't get a parent survey. And a community survey. All went out through Nottingham when we started. And we actually went through the results of that to kick off our process. There were no mentions well, of uniforms. I don't understand why I didn't get that. Because I get everything to my email at my office, and I have never once gotten an email concerning any kind of survey or any kind of opinion on uniforms, other than when I stand here in front of you. But I would appreciate that. Absolutely. And again, the new year is up and coming for 2013. You have three months over the summer to incorporate that. It takes about three months. And I have talked to the superintendents from different districts. I, again, gave you the information, so I would truly appreciate if you would take this conversation very seriously on behalf of the parents, not the board. And, you know, really look into it this time. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to hear? spending we're getting much more for the dollar. We're hiring trained professionals to come in and work with our students um, and, and trying to be responsible as, as responsible as possible. We've increased the use of certain services um, such as <coughs> school-based therapy um, because at dollar for dollar what we spend we can actually get more service to the students. I would respectfully disagree. I'll send you an email okay. about why. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Don, Don Ferrer, 34 Roosevelt Street. Uh, we represent the 
the Martin Cohen Advocacy Network, and I, we actually have good news, Mr. President. I know. Um, last October, we had a tricky trade, and one of the reasons why we always do this, other than the fact that Donald likes to do this, and <laughs> is that um, we, we actually take the money and, and get it towards any types of pro uh, programs or workshops, and one of the things that we really thought was very, very important um, in, in regards to the times and things that have been happening in schools is really the bullying situation. So we raised this money for you, uh, for the Board of Education to use uh, for students, hopefully in the middle school or where, wherever it is, with uh, the New Jersey Child Assault Prevention Project. And the great thing about them is that whatever you raise, they match. So we were able to raise $4,500 for you, sir. And for the board, and we're just like to do that. State Street, and I get Sharon's mail a lot. <laughs> She's not the only voice out here. Um, I agree 100% with her, and I'm a nutly guy through and through. And I never thought I would say, but our, but the Belleville students look good. Okay, they look very good in uniforms. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I'll close this portion of the meeting. In the old business. feedback, reviewed it with my committee, uh, and, and I know Ms. Bosley and I, I respect her opinion, uh, the feedback that we got was 70% not in favor of the uniforms. Excuse me, I'm I, a parent I just, and I never got an email okay. or a message, so it, that's it, it, was on, it was on our email, all you had to do. Or, or, we have no problem reviewing it again, okay? This will be probably the seventh or eighth time the board has reviewed it. Feedback comes back a lot different than what we hear at our as, public meetings. I think we got to be careful with that, uh, as Mr. Lesbick said. Uh, and that if we if we were to do something, yeah. you know, we want to make sure that the survey is is a uh, sort of scientific one as opposed to yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Yeah. We have this one here. And just to confirm again, is this um, Excuse me, if I may. Uh, let's, uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. We'll go back to your this discussion amongst the board. Okay. At this point. We, uh, we had your opportunity to this discussion with the board. Mr. President, my concern again is that uh, as I communicate as the parents who have approached me, we just have to be very careful when we put the survey out as we tried to do before, but there's a difference between a dress code, a uniform dress code, and uniforms. And we really have to make sure we know what everyone, everyone's on the same page before we get people in telling us, yes, this is what they want. Because each one of the three involves something very different uh, and that had, had different measurable you know, impact on, on the academic environment. But again, it's definitely heard that there are some voices again. I'm happy to put forward the information again and we'll try and do a better job. This is why with Mr. Levine and by the summer, he wrote on the website, hopefully making sure that these things are more accessible. 
Well, we just have to be hours for you, Mrs. Tantric Martin. Um, but uh, making sure that we do that. But again, I do want to be clear again, as we have these conversations, as you know, when I, I did speak with Ms. Bob, we were on the same page, but there are three very different things at play here. When people just say uniforms, very often it's not what they're talking about. Um, so we want to make sure that we educate and then survey. Right, we haven't done that. We haven't exactly. done right. in that type of format. That's all I'm asking. But how can we also make sure that we know that all the parents are getting? I mean, we're hearing people say that they haven't. I mean, we, there's got to be a way. You can say it's all on the website. And that's the danger of service. Well, that, and that's part of the question. Some people, a lot of people get it and don't respond. But through Naviance, I mean, I don't, I don't want to put Mr. Billy on the spot, but I mean, the majority of our parents, 712, are in Naviance with multiple email accounts. And Smarts, which doesn't necessarily blast that email, but as we move to real time, moving forward, this is something we will be able to make sure because parents won't have access to documents unless they have email addresses in the system which gives us the opportunity to make sure whatever they put in, we can get information out too. So it's definitely another step we're taking forward. Thank you. Any um, other business? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Um, thank you. Thank you Mr. President. Um, during the last few days, it's been, um, I, I've received a lot of uh, feedback as related to policy, as related to variances, and the situation going on. Um, I appreciate, I think all the board members have been out there trying to convey the message as best we can. As Mr. Lazbeck, who attended um, the Anacos PTO meeting, he gave his time, he answered every question, any question they will, that, that was thrown at him that night, and then afterwards he continued in that meeting, so I thank you for that. Um, it just demonstrates his commitment to this district and trying to do what he thinks is best to create that educational environment that we need for our students. Um, overall, I found the situation is, hasn't been fair to a lot of people. It's not fair to the students that may be uprooted. It's not fair to the other students, too, that are sitting in classes that are too full and not providing that educational um, environment that they need. Um, it's not fair to parents who probably thought that their kids could go through the whole K-6 without a fair issue. Um, but it's not fair to superintend it. And the board has been working on trying to address this issue and try to highlight the fact that there is this issue. There is this issue with crowded schools. And you need not look farther than every year we file a, a financial report with the state and attached, and our, the present one today, that we have attached is available online. Um, we approve it every, every year. We have data from 05 to 2011 indicating that our buildings are packed. There's only one building who's continually under, and that's um, Radcliffe. And they're only under by a few when you look at enrollment and um, capacity. So <coughs> I ask people to think about that when, I understand when you first hear this, it's shocking, it's jarring, you know, there's people who are affected, it's just not fair. But I wish, what well, would have been fair in the past few years if we've been looking at this, and this board is committed to looking at this. We've been discussing this for the last few months and trying to do a plan in the Roman site. I know we, the census data is out, it's, it's fresh, um, and I think it's a good opportunity um, for us to take a look at this and try to better plan for the district. We're just going to do a strategic planning for the role rolls in, and that's always been the plan. Um, but I just I, I, I just wanted to note to the rest of the board, we did get a lot of, get a lot of calls, I had a lot of people calling me all weekend, I had a lot of parents who were upset because of it, because the impact it does have on our residents who, and our parents who are doing so much for the district. But I also got a lot of calls from a lot of parents that are happy that the superintendent's doing something about it. And because they don't want their child in a class that has 25, 30 kids. I mean, there's kids, I had, I had one parent who called, um, who I know personally, um, who, who went through our system through our early intervention program. He's been in our school district since three because of special needs. And then that parent struggled with the decision, do I keep my kid in a Lincoln school environment or I put in my home school? I put that kid in the home school. And now they're in a situation of where they were in a classroom over 20, they might be in a class over 20. And that's harmful to that child. That child who had special needs, what are they going to do? So there's a lot of interest out there. And I think the superintendent is trying to balance them all. And I, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the board's commitment to sound strategic planning. Um, and the other thing to keep to be remindful of um, is that this, these rankings that affects the school district, small class size is the big, one of the big ticket items that they look at to see where you are, where you rank, as compared to your own school districts. 
And if Art, I know he's the superintendent, this board's committed to doing whatever we can to increase the reputation of this school district. We're doing all we can. It not only helps the students, it helps the taxpayers, it helps everyone. And I just want to encourage everyone to stay involved in the, in the conversation, stay committed to doing what we could, and, and I think in the end we'll see good results. So I, I think, I think, thank you everyone for their patience while we do that. Thank you. Any other business? If not, whereas the Board of Education will be discussing matters exempt from public discussion pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 12, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education recess to close executive session at this time to discuss student matters, personnel, contracts, and negotiations. A further resolve that the results of the discussion made public by inclusion on the agenda of the subsequent meeting of the Board of Education or when the reasons for discussing such matters in closed session no longer exist. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. We will uh, return from executive session in adjournment.